Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Welcome to the Oscars this year. It actually is taking place on a chair this year. We're not doing the stage or anything. It's, it's on a chair. I just want to jump right into the awards. And today we have one award, and it is for the most boring white racist man online that nobody knows exists. And that award goes out to the one and only Mark Dice. Yep, his name fits his face, I know. This is, that's what he looks like. And someone sent me some of Mark's videos, and so on my stream, we dove in to who this guy really is, what he believes in, and specifically how he feels about Hollywood going woke mode. So without further ado, editor, take us to the intro. Let's get into it. Mark Dice, 1.79 million subscribers. Order my book, Hollywood Propaganda here. Wow, that is an awesome book cover. <laughs> Hollywood Propaganda, how TV, movies, and music shape our culture. They should really change the Hollywood sign to just say propaganda. First, I just wanna watch this video called Hollywood Wokeness Goes Supernova. The biggest night in Hollywood is the Academy Awards this Sunday, where the Oscars are handed out to, and for many years, celebrities have spewed political nonsense, often about saving the environment or a virtue signal about some issue in a third world country. But True. in the Trump era, the political pandering went supernova. At the 2017 Oscars, just one month after President Trump's inauguration, host Jimmy Kimmel called him a racist and said that why is he talking about something that happened like five years ago? That the entire world now hates America because of the new president. And I want to say, I, maybe this is not a popular thing to say, but I want to say thank you to President Trump. I mean, remember last year when it seemed like the Oscars were racist? Oh, we got to subscribe. Hold on, click it. He was referring to the Oscars so white controversy, which I'll get into in a moment, but that- Imagine if I shot all my videos like this, just super zoomed in. Hollywood has gone woke mode this past weekend, or sorry, not this past weekend, five years ago when Jimmy Kimmel said something about Trump, and now I'm gonna make a video about it. That's eight minutes. That was just the warm up for the cultural Marxism that was to come. Yeah, because Jimmy Kimmel's definitely a, a cultural Marxist. Call Me By Your Name was nominated for Best Picture, which is based on the true story of a 24 year old man seducing a 17 year old boy. Hollywood calls that a great love story. So, you know, obviously his, his issue with Call Me By Your Name is not the fact that there is an age gap in the movie. It's the fact that, um, what is it? What's the main part about that? Oh, they're gay. Yeah, I forgot. They're super gay in that movie. Then came more white guilt as black films, black actors, and black writers were touted as being the best. Jeez, he's just like straight up like being racist. Like, did anyone say, yo, black writers and actors are the best. They're the best out of all of them. I don't, I don't remember, is there a quote? Did Jimmy Kimmel say that on stage? Maybe he'll play the clip where Jimmy Kimmel says that. Kimmel mentioned the new Black Power film, Black Panther, wouldn't be included in that year's awards because it just came out, and then expressed his disappointment that there weren't more black superheroes and complained that Superman is always played by white actors because, well, the character's white. It's weird that so many superheroes are white just because that's what they were in the comics, right? People say, well, well Superman is white. He's, he's always been white. Yeah, you know what else Superman has always been? Not real. That's true. <laughs> it is. You can do anything with superhero films. So is this guy going to complain about that? Is he upset? Let's find out why. No, Jimmy, it's not weird. What is weird is Hollywood's obsession with turning virtually every popular white character in film franchises into virtually every white character in every film franchise into an African American, but that's has been turned into a black person, right guys? You know that classic movie that just came out, um, Batman, the new Batman was played by a black guy, the new Spider-Man movie, black guy, Aquaman, black dude, new Flash movie coming out, black dude. None of them, all of them are white men. <laughs> Nothing's changed. None of that has changed at all. Then two black women, Tiffany Haddish and Maya. Why? Why do you have to point out immediately? <laughs> Two black women go up on stage stealing the spotlight from white men again. Not before complaining that there were too many white people involved in producing the Oscars. Don't worry, there are so many more white people to come to. Mm -hmm. So many. We Dude, it is a. Can this guy not? 
understand what a joke is? Let me see if I can uh, find the numbers. How diverse is the Academy? The lack of diverse came to a head in 2016 with the Oscar so white controversy. Four years later, there's been some progress. Okay, so it, it went from 25% uh, female members to 32% female members. It went from an 8% uh, <laughs> of people of color who were members to a 16%. It, it, Hollywood's going too woke. We need to scale it back a little bit. We're giving them too much of a percentage. Because if you get to like the 30%, then they start to take over. So he's doing this recap of, of Hollywood going, going woke mode from like years and years ago. So I want to get farther in to see how far he goes. Just a few minutes of the 2020 Academy Awards show starting, Chris Rock was complaining. This guy's mouth is also really small and he doesn't have any Was it just a few minutes? He has no lips. I know you guys, I know people would get mad if I was body shaming someone who was actually a bad person. But in this case, it's okay. It is. He has a digitally removed mustache like Superman. It does look like that. Academy Awards show starting, Chris Rock was complaining that there weren't enough black people nominated, but the show certainly made up for that with presenters. At one point, the guy came out on the stage to announce a land acknowledgement. The guy? It's Taika Waititi. What do you mean, the guy? Which is literally an apology for the United States existing on what some lunatics consider to be Native American land. Dude, he is unapologetic about how racist he is. What the Native Americans claim is their land. Wait, so what does he think? What do you, what does he think happened in history? Kick off the show, a singer named Janelle Monae changed the lyrics in one of her songs to complain about the Oscars being too white, marking the sixth year in a row the Oscars so white complaint was made. No amount of diversity can make them happy. Diverse but it's still white. That's the issue. Why would you stop fighting for an issue if it's still going on, right? Because the Oscars have only become 8% less white in terms of the Academy, in terms of who's voting on the films. So why would they just give up if the number of black people actually voting at the Academy has only gone from 8% to 16%? I guess since it's doubled, they should just quit, you know? Like, doubles a lot. Something called Hair Love won Best Short Film for a seven minute long animation about a black father learning to do his daughter's hair. Usually the winner for this category isn't included in the show. But because the film celebrated black people, then the producers made a special exception because of the systemic black privilege in America these days. Because of the systemic black privilege in America these days. He's, he's just like blatantly like, I don't want black people to be a part of the award show. <laughs> like, what? It, it is it is pretty baffling. Wait a minute, an animated short featured a black father learning to do his daughter's hair? Surely this was an award for best science fiction. Yeah, no, just blatantly racist about black stereotypes. Pretty cool. Um, it's great to find these corners of the internet that are just like very revolting this guy thinks he's a comedian of his own because he, you know, he goes to these city council meetings. This is the confusing thing. So he goes to these places and he dresses up and he complains about something. And then everyone laughs and they're like, oh, he's pretending to be a lib. But if, if liberals are doing that, then why are you going in place of them to do like a parody of them? Because you're arguing about things that no one's arguing about. Like this one, he like puts hair dye in and he goes there and, and, he trolls a city council meeting about Disney's new woke agenda. And I did watch a few minutes of this and it's very, it's just boring. It's like not funny or anything. Like no one's, there, there's nothing crazy going on where people are like, whoa, this is wild. And there's nothing like, w there's nothing serious. It's weird. Cause like no one's laughing, no one's offended. It's just four Dude. minutes of him just like talking and being boring. Thank you for having me back council. I'm professor Mark Dice, teacher of gender studies at Cal State University. My pronouns are they and them. <laughs> for decades, my colleagues and I have been oh, working funny. behind the scenes to set the groundwork to dismantle the nuclear family and institute the cultural Marxist revolution that we're now seeing. It's just, it's just lame and it's like not, like, there's nothing even wild or, like, weird about it. I also just don't know where his subscriber base came from. Like, is he has he po been popular for a long time? Or, 
Oh, he's like, he's been around for a minute. It's just a lot of his stuff is like, I go around to enough people where some of them will not really listen to me and do something dumb. And then I'm going to cut all of the funny ones and then put them in the thing. It's like that Jimmy Kimmel bit where he's like, oh, I forgot what it's called, but they go out and they tell people like fake news stories and then they get people to pretend like they heard about them. But it's like they just do it to like, you know, 100 people and then they pick out the 10 people that fall for it. And that's the content, I guess. People sign I am a moron petition without reading. I'm Mark Dice, and this is a petition that says I'm a moron. Support solar panels on government buildings as a green renewable energy source. You're telling them that the petition's for something else. It's not like you're just handing them something and going, hey, could you sign this petition? It says it on the sheet. It's you're just you're giving them you're telling them a lie. So it's easy, like obviously they're gonna think they're signing the petition for that thing. And it's not that crazy, whatever. And then they just sign in and then, oh, it's funny, that's content. Mark Dice, the, the most boring man on YouTube. Well, as you can imagine, the twits on Twitter, Democrat members of Congress and the liberal media are having a hard time coming to grips with the fact that Elon Musk is taking over Twitter and it's gonna be loosening the rules and allowing people to post facts and opinions that hurt people's feelings. and would get you suspended in the past. It's gonna loosen up Twitter's rules. I guarantee you nothing is going to change. Someone said bro for It looks like he is whole, he held in his breath and then the whole time he's talking, he's like, yep, it turns out Elon Musk bought Twitter and we're gonna see who, what, all these liberals are freaking out about it because we're finally gonna be able to post uh, illegal things now and everything's gonna change. Nothing's gonna change. Okay, this guy sucks. Done. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, you should think about hitting subscribe. You don't have to, but think at least think about it for a second and maybe leave a comment or share the video with a friend. I'm not your freaking uncle. I'm not going to tell you what to do as an uncle does. Anyways, go check out some of my other videos and I hope you have a great day. Bye.